a lot of times I think people have this misconception that, you know, if you practice something in the morning, people say to me, you know, Dhanapani, if I practice meditation for 10 minutes every morning, is that going to affect my life? Yes, but what are you doing the remaining 23 hours and 50 minutes? If you're doing things that counteract what you're doing in the morning, then it doesn't help. If you exercise for 10 minutes in the morning and the rest of the day eating, you know, fish and chips and drinking beer and pizza, laying on the couch, it's not going to help. So the people I work with have kind of changed over the years. And I would say in the last two, three years, the people I worked with, what they really want to know is I think they've come to the realization that they know very little about the mind. They're experts in their areas, but they know very little about the mind and they really want to understand the mind better so that they can leverage their mind to be even better at what they do. All of them want to leverage themselves better and they, they feel like they have a lack of understanding of how their mind works. So two things here, Brian. One is wanting to a quick fix to learning. And I spoke yesterday in Munich to a group of entrepreneurs, and one guy asked me, so this, is there a quick fix to having more energy in life? I'm like, there's no quick fix in life. It's just, that's the first thing you have to understand. And I think technology trains us to think they're quick fixes. So I can go on my phone. I live in New York City. Last week, I went on Amazon, ordered something at 10.30 at night, and the next morning at 8 o'clock in the morning, FedEx bust my door and it was there. It's crazy, right? So I can get things instantaneously through technology. And then because we're so trained to getting things as soon as we want them, that we apply that to our life. And we think that, yeah, we can change overnight. And then people out there selling hacks. There's this hack, there's that hack. How are we gonna hack this? How are we gonna hack business? How are we gonna hack the mind? How are we gonna hack the body? But it doesn't work that way. You have a child. And your child is growing slowly and learning slowly. There's no way to hack your child. Can you make your three-year-old boy, right? You have yeah. three-year-old boy learn... Walk faster, talk walk faster. Walk faster and learn triple integrals by tomorrow. Why don't you hack him? It doesn't work, right? And then why as adults do we think we can hack everything? It's not sustainable. And then the other thing about being a teacher is that, you know, that's another thing that's being sold out there. Besides hacking, it's like, you know, let me certify you to be a yoga teacher, let me certify you to be a life coach. I know you're 19 years old and you've never had any experiences in life, nor have you done, achieved anything that pushed you beyond the limits of your imagination, but let me certify you as a life coach after a three-day weekend program. And I think when you go with the idea that I'm gonna learn something and then take that content and teach it, you never really learn. When I went to the monastery and to, to learn from my guru, I went purely to be a student. First of all, I went there with the knowledge that I knew nothing. I wanted to learn from him. And then once I learned from him, my goal was to strive to implement everything as best as possible. I have zero intent to teach, right? And, that, and I feel when you take that approach, you learn the best. And some of the people that I work with purely have that approach. They have zero intention to teach. They just really want to learn. And so when you go there with that intention, then you learn really well. Like we were chatting earlier, you know, if someone wants to learn martial arts, they want to learn the quick swirl 360 kung fu kick in the air or something. You know, no one wants to go and do the hard work. And that's all about the quick fix. You know, how can I get from A to B as quickly as possible? And it's not only about training the body, it's about training the mind too, right? The mind needs to adjust and the mind is like a muscle. It needs to reshape itself to be able to take on a new way of thinking and a new way of behaving and you know progressively hold that new shape and that only comes through repetition and patience and slow hard work of doing the same thing over and over again and i think so many teachers out there are selling quick fixes and because they have never been trained themselves properly so they just they've got a quick fix learning to get from a to b so then they go and teach a quick way to get from a to b and this old traditional path of slowly learning and developing yourself over a period of time is, is what really creates mastery in a certain level. You get used to being comfortable, and that's the problem, right? You know, you, you stay in an apartment for long enough, you stay in a city for long enough, you're comfortable, you know where to go buy your milk, your bread, you know, your surroundings, you get comfortable, you get used to it. And, you know, one of the biggest teachings he taught me is about awareness in the mind. You're not the mind, rather you're pure awareness traveling through different areas of the mind. And your goal is to take your awareness from your conscious mind, move it through the conscious mind, through the subconscious, 
into the superconscious areas of the mind, which is the most refined areas of your mind to experience deeper in the states and ultimately self-realization, God-realization. But awareness travels in the mind, but when you get stuck physically in a certain place and you get used to your surroundings and your comforts, your external environment is, is a reflection of how your awareness is working in your mind. That means your awareness is stuck in a particular area of the mind because there's really no separation between your inner state and your outer state. And what he was teaching me is that by moving me around, making sure I never got comfortable long enough one place to, to stay attached, he was teaching me that to not allow my awareness to get stuck in a particular area of the mind and in a particular area of the mind and stay in a rut. And that I could actually pry my, break my awareness free from a particular area of the mind, really grab hold of it and take it deep within myself and experience deeper states of mind. And, right? I mean, if you go on most people's timelines, a lot of people's timeline, it's amazing. You can scroll through and it's just a thousand, there's a thousand posts and it's 999 nine pictures of themselves, selfies. And, and I think social media has made people extremely selfish. And all people think about is themselves. You know, here's what I'm doing. Look at me here, look at me there. You know, and you look at also public figures and celebrities and influencers. They constantly post pictures of themselves and they're amazing live traveling all around the world. And you know, I see, and I know some of these people and they never post pictures of their students or you know, who's following them. It's always about them. Nobody spends time with themselves. And when I say to people, I say this to people, they go like, oh, I have alone time. Every evening when I walk my dog for half an hour, that's my alone time. And they're like, no, that's walking the dog. When I'm at the gym working out, that's my alone time. I go like, no, that's being at the gym. Alone time is you sitting down in a chair at home or on the floor, cross-legged, you know, no music, no journal, no podcast, your eyes closed and spending time in contemplation and reflection. Not meditation, but in actual reflection. Really having a conversation with yourself, the same way we're having a conversation, getting to know each other and, and each other's opinions and thoughts. You have a conversation with yourself, and people don't do that, right? They don't spend any time doing that, and if you don't spend any time doing that, how would you know what's important in your life, where are you struggling, and what you need to focus on next, and what you need to work on? You're so busy from the moment you, from the moment the alarm rings, they reach over to the side table, grab their phone, turn off the alarm, look at all the notifications, and then start stroking that phone. This is how people get pleasure in the morning, stroking their phone. And then every 10 years, someone has a quote unquote midlife crisis when they realize that they're living the life that they've never contemplated, they've never planned, they're not connected with, right? And then that's kind of life. And then you're on your deathbed looking back saying, what did I do? Why did I value these things? Yeah. And they're wondering why, and it's because they never spent the time in solitude with themselves. Do the work now, so you can spend the rest of your life a, living a life that's in alignment with your purpose. Once you figure out what you want now and what your purpose in life is, then you can spend the rest of your life living a life in alignment with that purpose. And you know, talking about deathbed, you know, when my guru was dying, one of the last things he said on his deathbed was, what an amazing life I would not have traded it for anything in the world. What an amazing life, I would not have traded it for anything in the world. Now what words to hear from a dying man? You know, to be able to look back on your life and say, that was freaking spectacular. So when you're so determined, it's when you're so clear what you want in life, and you're so determined to, give, to get it, and you're willing to give up everything and everyone for it, then you're living a life in alignment with your purpose and then you can spend the rest of your life in sync with who you are as opposed to chasing so many different things around you that that sparkle whether it's you know I want to be like that person and I want to do this and that sounds fascinating maybe I'll try that for a few years you know you meet kids nowadays that are 18, 19, 20 years old and you ask them what do you want to do? Uh, what are you studying in university? Oh, I think I'll do science and for a year and, you know, and then I might major in this, but I was also thinking I might take a year off, you know, and travel a little bit and then come back and I'm not sure, maybe I'll do arts. I'm kind of interested in this topic. I do you not know what you want to do? It's your, we have one life. You don't get a second shot at this. Get clear what you want.